Hello everybody, here is another From The Tip video. Today I got a Dirt Devil Platinum 1000 bagged up right. So this is a 90s bagged up right and I remember somewhere I saw, I think it was in a brochure or catalogue or something, I saw the Platinum range of cleaners and I know the Platinum 1000 was a higher end cleaner even though it is still really cheap feeling. As you can tell by this, the way the handle just bends like that. Um, so it's probably quite cheaply made, but I know it was expensive when it came out as part of the Dirt Devil range. Dirt Devil UK aren't really anything anymore, and they don't really produce any machines at all. I think they've got about one, and that's that 360 reach thing. Anyway, so this was a pretty high-end machine for its time. I thought, however, the Platinum 1000 had a headlight, but I'm obviously wrong. I know there was one variant that had a headlight there, and that's just blanked off. There's plenty of room to put one, though. Um, so we've got a height selector here for bare floor, low carpet, medium pile carpet, and long pile carpet. Um, and there's not really much else to say about it. It's got, a, well, it's got variable speed which goes from minimum to maximum. Um, what else has it got? It's got all its tools as well, which I was pleased to find, because usually when you get vacuum cleaners from the tip, they're missing loads of tools, but this one has everything that it should have had when it left the factory. This, though, was confusing me. This part here. And what this is, is a different design, really. Oh, quickly, I'll just show you these. Pause if you want to read them. That sticker isn't on straight. That's not a good company image. You can see how dirty it is. Royal Appliances, made in USA. So this is a model 6850 UK. The UK being for the United Kingdom, presumably. Then another sticker here that says for service in the UK or in Dutchland or in France. Um, yeah, I've just noticed Plant D there. I wonder what Plant D is. Right, so here we've got the hose connector. Now this machine features an onboard hose, as you can see here, but you have to connect it to the machine when you want to use it. It's just stored on board, it's not actually connected to anything. This end that you put the tools on pulls out there like that, and this end here connects into there. So really it's just stored on board, it's actually not to do with the machine, it just gets stored on it. So. What you can do, what, how you connect the hose, is there's a little thing here. Yeah, so I've not turned this on yet, so I don't know if it works, but I have fiddled around with it an awful lot. So I'm sort of used to the layout, which is why I'm talking about it in a way that I know what I'm doing. But um, yeah, so that little pip there on the hose, that goes in that hole there. So you push, you push that in. Go on. God, it's hard to do with one hand. Yeah, like that. And that's in there. And then you've got your hose here. And it's got all the attachments, as I was saying. It's got an extendable extension tube. That slides out. Where does that slide out? Yeah, that slides out of there, like that. And what you do with this, basically, is it says here, lock and unlock. So if you twist it to unlock, I think that's some, yeah, it slides out like that. And it's an all right length. And then you, to lock it, you twist it like that and that locks it in. And then to unlock it, of course you twist it back, if you can do it in my knees, and then it, yeah, just about, and it pushes back in there. So we've got that, which is good. We've got this combination tool which pops out of here. And this is a dusting brush. We'll lower the brush, well, not too hard, but they're not soft, certainly. And that slides off to give you an all-purpose slash upholstery thing for doing things like this chair, like that. And so it's got, it's got that and the hose. And then the last tool it's got which I think nearly every vacuum cleaner in the world has, is a crevice tool, which I'll show you now. I'll just put this back on there. 
that just snaps on, nice clicking sound, so you know it's locked into place. And the crevice tool, I think, which is quite a nice, good design, and it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, is camouflaged into the back of the handle. So to get it, you literally just pull it out, and there's your crevice tool. And when I pulled this out of the tip, well, out of the skip it was in, that was just rested on there like that. So goodness knows how that didn't fall off and go right to the bottom, out of my reach. I was lucky to get that. It just sort of balanced on the top. And I realised that it clicks in there. So, yeah. So this machine has all its accessories. But I was thinking, on a usual bagged upright, the suction from the cleaner head goes through the hose. So I was thinking, well, with this setup, how is how does it actually work? And it works like this. I'll show you. I'll just remove the hose out first. And then that, that goes in there. And that goes back over the top that clips into there yeah it's all coming together now and then that goes into there and that's a bit loose but it's not going to fall off nothing you can do really about that so the only damage to it is the hose is dinted there if you can see it's got like yeah it's just got a little dinting where it's probably been stood on or something but apart from that it's all right so what else yeah this is what i want to show you Go back to the front, take the bag out, you pull here, as it says. That didn't sound too good, did it? Flipping out, but not broke it. Right, okay. No, I did not. Um, so there's your bag door with a bag check indicator there and a date that says, what does it say? The 12th of the 19th, 95 in faded numbers. So whether that's the 12th, the 19th day of December, 95, I don't know. This machine's from that time, about. We've got a pre-motor filter there. Now here's the design, which is different to most bagged up rights. You've got a bag fill tube thing there, or a bag fill, what, there's a proper name for that collar. And um, that just goes right the way through and out to this thing here for tools use. But when you're not using that somehow, and I don't know how, because I've not had it apart yet, the suction is diverted. Obviously, when you put that cap springs back over, the suction's blocked off from there and it gets diverted through the cleaner head up this pipe here and then out through the bag fill collar thing. So it can go, there's a way down. It looks a bit rude, this, doesn't it? There's a way down in there and there's a way across in there. So this has like two different air paths. And it also has variable speed and there's the little thing for the variable speed. This was the bag that was in it. I took it out. Obviously, I, I ripped that off just to see how well that fitted over there. Not well. It fits over too well because it won't stay on properly. But, um, yeah, now, you can't really get bags for these or they don't really make them anymore for the UK market. This machine, as it says on, uses Dirt Devil Type N bags and belt number four. Hmm. Belts probably won't be a problem, but the bags seem pretty rare there's only one the only bags i've been able to find for it are genuine dirt devil type n ones on ebay and it's the last pack and it's a fiver for three with three pound delivery so i don't really want to pay that but if you google it on just normal google dirt devil type n bags for platinum series or whatever whatever you google to find bags for this it does come up with these bags which are copy hoover turbo power 2 bags but i might find so i'm probably i won't be using dirt devil bags in it because it's rare as hen's teeth but i will be using some sort of bags maybe not turbo power 2 bags as they're a bit loose they do however create a seal which is good but they are a bit loose there's two little bumps there you see which the bag collar is supposed to slide over and lock it into place. Maybe Panasonic upright, Morphe Richards upright bags, or what Electrolux upright bags. Hopefully, something like that will fit this machine. And if not, if I can't find bags that fit, I'll probably go back to the Hoover Turbo Power 2 bags. That was in it when I got it, you see. I've not turned it on yet, so I don't know if it works, but I, was, I certainly had it apart in various ways to have a look at it so i think we should turn it on now so that goes on there and that clips on and there's no feature on this machine to stop you 
putting the bag door on without a bag in. It's raining outside and it's going dark. Well, it's not really going dark. It's raining. It's miserable. So I don't really want to turn it on outside. So I'm going to risk my life for all of you people and turn it on in here. So I don't want that, though. That can go. We can go outside for a split second, can't we? All I need to do is put that in there. Right. So let's have a look at this Platinum 1000 Watt. So, turning it round, this is as I found it, so, you know, it's been looked after. It's not too damaged. It's got all its accessories. And um, there's two swivel cord hooks here to release the cable. Maybe there isn't. That one's just cut. Oh, it's been glued in. And two of the little tabs have snapped off. Never mind. What is it with me and cord hooks? You should have seen. If you watch the video on that Kirby, I snapped the bottom cord hook off of that. And it's now there's barely enough there to keep the cable round. So I've got to glue that back on. So not only have I just broke that. I've now also broke this one. Never mind, that was broke before though, because it's been glued. Anyway, there's your cable. Don't say the bottom one's broke as well. It's not come off, but it's very rattly is the bottom one, so be careful with it. Let's just, I've got a good idea. For now, let's push that in and pretend it never happened. And just put it back like that. Right, okay, so let's plug it in and see if it works. That, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Mm, that's a bit loose. That's a bit delicate, that bottom one, that top one doesn't really. I'll probably just glue that in and keep that like that as a static one. But it confused me because that has arrows on to turn. So it obviously was a manoeuvre. They were obviously both rotatable and that snapped off and someone glued it on. Let's see, shall we here? Let's plug it in, see if it does anything. Right, nothing so far. No, tell you what, before I turn it on, I do this with all vacuums with variable speed. Put it in the lowest setting. Because otherwise, if it blows up, it'll blow up quietly. Now it's in low power, so let's see. Ooh. Very interesting. Seems to be working. Turn it up a bit. When it's on low power, well, it's fine on low. When you put it on high, it seems to get a lot more rattly, whether something's loose in there. But when I turned it to high pile carpet, the rattle stopped. I'll have a look. It's not a life-threatening situation it's in anyway. So, God, my finger's been doing that in front of the camera. That's going to be annoying for you all to watch. Should we test the hose suction? Why the hell not? So take this out of here, open this, doing all this again one-handed, that presses in as I've shown you before, click, that's in there and then you pull that out of there or it will get stuck in as I've just, god why the hell, I didn't put it in that hard did I that it flipping get stuck.
God's sake. Oh, I'll have to put you down. I don't know why that's stuck in there. God's sake, what the hell have I done to make it in there like that? God. That is proper. There we go. That was rammed in there. I don't know why I didn't put it in that hard. Anyway, let's turn it on and it will be rattly, but we'll test the hose suction. See if the bag full indicator works. Okay, there's not enough suction to move the bag full indicator, so whether the bag full indicator just has fluff built up in it, anyway, it wouldn't fully go across to red, meaning the bag's full. Still, doesn't matter, that can be sorted during, when it's cleaned up. I don't know if I'm going to refurbish this, I'll be honest with you, because I might just have it for me, because although I've got the Dirt Devil hand vax, I don't have an actual Dirt Devil bagged up right from the 90s. We well, don't have any Dirt Devil bagged up right. So that's a bit unfortunate. That's the only fault with it. The top cord hook. But apart from that, it seems fine. It's even got all the tools, as I was saying to you before. And it's nice. I like that design, the telescopic extension tube. And you saw the brush turning, so we know the brush bar works. And when I felt it, the belt seemed fairly good, so I don't even think it'll need a new belt. It just needs cleaning up and finding some bags that will fit. So thanks for watching this before video on this From the Tip Dirt Devil Platinum 1000 bagged up right. What I will have to do now, because I don't think I'll refurbish it, is when I find it some bags, I'll give it a little bit of a wipe down, find it some bags, and then we'll have a demo of it and see how good it is at removing muck from the carpet. I will also see if I can stop that rattling down there though, because that is annoying and that's not right. So whether something's loose, the top, mm, that's a bit, a bit loose. Nice bit of detailing though. It's got the Royal logo right on the front of it there. Made in USA, which is nice. But apart from that, I'm pretty made up with it. I think from the tip, so obviously it costs nothing. All you have to do is when no one's looking, reach in and grab whatever you want. I'm quite impressed with it really, for nothing anyway. Um, I think these were expensive though, as I said, when new. I'd be a bit naffed off if I paid a load of money for it to find out the plastic was so cheap that it could do that, but still. It survived 20 years, so let's see with me if it can survive another 20. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.